Democratic challenger Jim Webb is within spitting distance of winning Virginia's Senate seat, a move that could shift the balance of power in Washington. In fact, would shift the balance of power. That would make my next guest pretty happy. Mudcat Saunders is a personal advisor to Jim Webb, also a renowned Democratic campaign consultant. Mudcat, welcome. Thank you, Tucker. Here's what I don't understand. Here's what I don't understand. Um, I thought this race was going to be all about Iraq. And here you have Jim Webb, a guy who is a decorated Vietnam veteran, a Marine veteran, whose son is serving in Iraq right now. And you would expect Jim Webb to be up at every opportunity saying, I've been against this war since day one. I was prescient about this war. My, my own boy is serving in this war. You know, here's my position. And you don't hear him saying that. And I don't get it. Well, you know, Tucker, George Allen on a scale of one to 10 as a politician is probably a 10. I mean, I feel yeah. like that, that, that Americans right now are looking for something except, you know, a politician. Uh, Jim Webb, you know, is, is, is an engaging individual. He's funny as he can be and possibly one of the smartest people I've ever met in my life. You know, we could end this thing right now, uh, let Jim Webb and George Allen have an IQ contest, and Jim Webb will beat him 50 points and we'll, we'll go home. But that said, <laughs> okay. that, that said, you know, Jim won't let us. And, and won't we'll let you what? Well, uh, as far as bringing Jimmy into this, you know, it, it, he's not going to do Jimmy it. being his son is a Jimmy being man his in son in, 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 in Iraq. Uh, I'll give you an example. This is the type of, of guy Jim Webb is and how, you know, non-political that he is. Uh, he was coming down to Southwest Virginia to, to do a, an event. And anyway, I was talking with a banjo picker with the Locust Mountain Boys who were helping us out there. And I told him, I said, look, you know, let's do the Marine Corps hymn when Jim walks out. You know, Jim obviously being one of the most celebrated of the 400,000 Marines to have served in Vietnam. And uh, when Jim Webb speaks, you listen, he has this quality. It's regal almost, not in a sense of a King Richard or a King Arthur, but more in a sense of a brave heart. He called me to the side and he says, Mudcat, he said, I want to make this clear. He said, under no circumstances do you ever use a Marine Corps hymn in any of my well, campaign. He says, because I will never forgive Ollie North for doing it in 2000. Well, good for him. He I, said, my Corps will never be brought into public controversy. I, I admire that as I admire him. I disagree with him on some issues, but I think he's a solid guy. And I've always thought of him as a, a conservative, an ideological conservative, actually. I've read a lot of things, most things that he's written. And I'm... I was a little surprised to see him up with Bill Clinton the other day, and I wonder, is he, the charge is that he's a carbon copy of Hillary Clinton, that he's a, some sort of liberal Democrat. What are the differences between Jim Webb and Hillary Clinton? Oh, uh, well, the difference between Jim Webb and Hillary Clinton are obviously, there's lots of cultural differences. I think they both like have what? a, uh, I, I think Jim is, is, is possibly, you know, more pro-gun. I think that, that, that Jim is, is more representative of our culture here in the South, and especially in the real part of Virginia that's, you know, 50 miles this way. Uh, I think he's more in line with the culture. His cultural message to us is exactly what the Democrats need to do. It's a message that will bring the Reagan Democrats home. And uh, uh, it's a cultural thing. The Democrats, as you and I have talked many times, we don't understand the power of the culture and the electorate. Jim Webb understands that. At the same but does he buy, I mean, did he vote for John Kerry and Al Gore? Does he buy into the Democratic Party's positions on things? Uh, I don't think that he buys into to, to anything. I will say this about Jim Webb. You know, he's an independent thinker. As I've said before, he's not a political guy. He's not. Uh, and if Americans want a guy, and if Virginians want a guy, he's going to go to Washington. And, I, and you know, the, it won't be, it'll be the first bee's nest he sees. He'll throw a rock right dead in the center of it. He's that kind of guy. He's running out of a call to duty. There's no hidden agenda. The guy is the most grounded individual I've ever met. He's got, you know, uh, he can go back to writing books. He can do his movie, Whiskey River. There's so many things he can do, but this call to duty is what drives him. And this is what we need right now in this tough time in American history. His slogan, quickly, born fighting. What does that mean? Uh, born fighting was it, it comes from the from the Scots Irish culture. It's right, it comes and he wrote from, a book of the same title, right. which is an excellent book. I think. How the Scots Irish shaped you know America. Right, but who's he who's he born fighting? I mean it. Uh, it's just our nature. It's not a very reassuring slogan, is it? It's well, sort of it's like a reassuring slogan if you come from the Scots Irish culture like <laughs> I do. It's the reason Jim Webb and people like him were the reason that Hadrian built the wall. Yeah. <laughs> Mudcat, Mudcat Saunders. I wish, I wish every consultant were as colorful as you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Todd. Adrian built the wall. Well, for profiles of the